uh, excited about this week, clearly, uh, homecoming week uh, for the University of Arizona. I think uh, Rob Gronkowski is in town. I've heard that he's already here. Uh, we'll be out practice today. Um, Antoine Quezon talked to our team yesterday. He was in town, or is in town. Uh, so that was great for our kids to hear from him. Uh, we had great practice yesterday, great energy. Uh, everything is um, going according to plan in regards to the health of our team coming off of the bye week. We'll have a good bonus practice today as a extra called a fourth practice of the week. Um, and then we'll get, uh, get ready to roll. We'll have our team over at Bear Down Friday. We'll bring the whole team over there tomorrow evening. And then we'll bring our non-travel group to the bonfire. So uh, gonna try to um, make sure that all of the homecoming events that we can be a part of, we'll be a part of. And then after that, uh, we'll have normal tomorrow night in the hotel and normal Saturday leading up to kickoff. Uh, hopefully Rob will lead us on the Wildcat Walk. That is our plan right now. And uh, then we'll go, um, go play a really good football team. And uh, we know we got a great challenge ahead of us there that uh, we are looking forward to. They have 12 interceptions this season, which I think is tied for second in the country. Um, great turnover margin. What is it that they do well in the secondary or on defense to take the ball away? Yeah, they had, um, you know, I think they had four against Oregon State, a few against Stanford. Um, in those two games, I think they hit seven or eight of them of the 12. I think it was something like that, or maybe six of the 12. Um, I, I would say this, you know, they're, they, they're long. Their, their team is long. So when your Mike linebacker is six foot five or six foot four, that balls are tipped. And uh, what I've noticed, uh, there was a ball, I think it was the three yard, Stanford was on the two or three yard line throwing a fade ball. Ball got tipped up in the air, corner intercepted it. A um, couple times being thrown over the middle, Oregon State threw a couple balls over the middle, ball got tipped up, intercepted. Um, they're fast and they're long. And I would say that combination is a lot of times what causes interceptions. Uh, they play a lot of zone coverages, um, almost primarily a zone coverage team, uh, which allows you to have eyes uh, on the quarterback and they move really well together to be able to get one guy in the throwing lane and then one guy to be able to make the play. Any types like us have kind of compared your receiving group to USC's, obviously favorably compared the two? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, I think we have a good receiving group. I think that's been proven. I think they have a really good receiving group. Certainly it's been proven. Um, I mean, you look at their guys, you know, two, three, and four, all really good players, really, really, really good players. And, um, you know, they have all the accolades. I mean, Addison's a Blitnikoff winner. Um, you know, they, uh, Caleb is probably a freshman All-American last year, quarterback, and um, they do a really good job. And, you know, their receiving core uh, is very confident that they're probably um, the top ones, and I could see why they feel that way. What, what stands out to you most about Caleb? Size, uh, he's an impressive looking guy. Um, I, I met him for the first time at the Pac-12 Media Day and he, he's an impressive looking guy. Uh, I would say his ability to make plays when the plays aren't originally there or necessarily there right away is a huge part of their game. He's able to make uh, throws when he's out of the pocket uh, he's able when he's on the move. I think he's extremely dangerous. Uh, when he's able to, when when the play breaks down, you know the term breaks down is is a tough one to use. But when the play is not necessarily exactly how you think it's going to be, and he escapes the pocket, uh, his accuracy is uh, extremely impressive. Uh, he's got a big arm. He sees the field well. He's very experienced. Uh, this is second year with Lincoln. You know, so he has, he knows exactly what coach wants and um, coach Riley does a great job with him and you could see why, why he's as good as, uh, good as advertised. What are a couple of keys that your defense needs to do early on to try to slow them down? Um, you know, we have to put pressure on the quarterback. The quarterback can't feel as if he has all day. Um, he's too good. He's too good just to give him um, a lot of time back there. 
we have to find a way to um, disrupt the receivers. We can't let the receivers just run free. Um, again, they're, they're too talented and too good. So we've got to find a way to, to cause some disruption in their timing, really overall, as an offense. Um, and then the other part of it is we have to find a way to create, create a turnover, um, create a takeaway. They're very good at not turning the ball over. Uh, so not only are they good taking away, but that turnover margin uh, is very impressive as well. So I would say the two things is try to throw them off timing and then, uh, you know, try to try to find the ball somewhere. Can you talk about Caleb? You talk about, you know, only having one interception and they don't turn over the ball that much. Is it just him and his decision making? What have you seen from him in that aspect? Um, yeah, you know, I think it's I think it's a little bit of everything. I think there's uh, there's certainly a benefit that he's in his second year in the system, so he knows kind of where everybody's going to be, uh, knows where Coach Riley wants the ball to go. Uh, I think there's a benefit that um, you know he's very accurate, so a lot of the you know there hasn't been a lot of even missed opportunities too much. I don't think um, I would you know in my opinion there has been a lot of you know throws. There's a one or two maybe that could go the other way, but for the most part, uh, he makes good decisions. He throws the ball away when he needs to. Um, their receivers get open, and he's able to find them. And then uh, he's able to use his legs when needed. So what he's able to do, uh, and I, I think you saw that from, you know, if you compare him to Jaden, uh, you look at Jaden's last game, what, 75% four touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, but what he did really well and what he's done really well the last few games is he's used his feet when the play isn't there. You know, when that opportunity presents itself that the – I think Caleb's done that really well. And, uh, you know, we got to keep working through that. But that's how you eliminate those uh, interceptions. And then the final part is they've been playing with a lead. So when you play with a lead, uh, there's really no reason to force the ball. There's no reason to push the ball down the field. Um, you know, two of our interceptions came against Cal, you know, play 71 and 76 of the game. And then uh, I think three of our interceptions came against Mississippi State. Um, two in the second half. So, though, you know, if you look at that, we've thrown seven all year. Five of them came in those two games, and a lot of that had to do with the score. Um, when you don't have a, a big scoring issue, you know, you're not down by 18 points like we were in those, you know, those games that probably would have been similar. When you have uh, the struggles that you've had on defense along with an opponent that is as potent as USC, is there any value in trying to slow your own offense down to – take more time to maybe give your offense, your defense rest? Yeah, I think, you know, I looked at, I looked at our time of possession. I think we're at 28-30 or 28-40. Um, you know, so I would say this, that um, I believe we're top five in first downs per game. So we, we don't really go, you know, we're averaging 30 first, 30 first downs a game or something to that effect. So it's not like we're just on the field, off the field on offense. Um, I think the key really becomes is um, you get off the field a little bit quicker on defense and you have one more drive and you should be able to flip the time of possession. Um, we really don't want to not play our game. Um, our game is an up-tempo game. Um, it's not every play is an up-tempo. So we do have the ability to get in and out for timing purposes, but um, I don't really see us being a team that's going to just try to grind it out and say maybe we could eliminate a possession because I don't, I don't think, I think that could hurt us more than help us. Do you look forward to these kind of games coming from the offensive side of the ball? You can ride with able to put up so many points. You've been able to put up so many points. It's exciting for you. It, well, all games are exciting, really, for me. Uh, I love it. I love. Uh, I love Saturday. I love Saturdays. Um, I love watching our players play. I love watching our coaches coach. Um, there's, you're certainly going to be. You know, we have to play good on offense to win this game. You know, period. So it's not going to. The rest of it. Um, there's a great challenge there to really see exactly what we can do on offense. Um, we we recognize that they're a very very good team top 10 team. Um, so what else could you ask for? You're playing a top 10 team at your home stadium. Um, it's going to be a great challenge for us. We're a, probably a 16 point underdog or something like that. And uh, as we like to be. So we'll take the underdog approach. We'll do the best we possibly can. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what it looks like on Saturday. Would you say that the depth chart that you were handing out on Thursday is reflective of where guys are at injury 
Wise, some of the guys we've been talking about, Sade and Rutherford. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that if we, um, the, it's reflective of how I expect the game to look on Saturday. You know, so that would be for this Saturday's depth chart. That's that's what I would expect. So with Sade and Rutherford. Yeah, I would probably assume that it would be difficult to get them in any starting role. What about in the game? Or second role. Wise and what kind of impact can the home coming from make on the Yeah, I think as of yesterday, we were at 45,000, um, so 90% sold. Um, as of yesterday, uh, puts that about, uh, gives us 5,000, you know, left to go. Uh, you know what I say, put the 5,000 extra students in there and then you're sold out. Um, I mean, what student doesn't want to go hang out with Gronk? I told Gronk, I want you right in the middle of the zoo. Gronk's zoo. Gronk's zoo for this weekend. So, we'll, um, you know, I, I hope we get to that number. I would love to get close to, if not hit a sellout again. Uh, but I, I know that, you know, I, again, it's why wouldn't you come to the game? Why wouldn't you come? You got USC coming in town, top 10 team. Uh, you got hopefully some scoring going on in the game. I don't think we've disappointed in terms of how we've played in terms of making the games fun and interesting. Uh, really, all of our home games. Uh, and then, you know, I, even against Oregon, right, the, the final score didn't result, but first drive of the game, we're down there. Second drive of the game, we're down there. Third drive of the game, we're down there. And, you know, we had six possessions in the first half, all of which were inside their 20. So I think we just got to find a way to uh, pack the place. It's, it's the greatest thing to do in Tucson at 4 o'clock on Saturday unless you guys can think of something different, is Lev coaching a baseball game on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Okay. What do you make of the way that USC was able to make over their team in just a year's time by hitting the portal so hard? Yeah, that was certainly their approach. Uh, we kind of went with a little different approach. Um, we, we certainly believe, and I believe very strongly, that college football should be about high school recruiting. Uh, and then I believe you should find who you need to find in the portal because that's an opportunity that's now given to us to try to fill some spots. Um, but I don't want to be a program, and we're not going to be a program that is going to be portal you or whatever some of those transfer you or all that other stuff. We don't want to be that. We're not going to be that. Um, I want to sign 20 to 25 high school kids every year. And I think that what you should do is develop high school kids into being great college football players. And then when you have a chance to get a Jaden Delore, you go get them. When you have a chance to get a Jacob Cowling, you go get them. Um, but you also get T-Mac, and you get Dorian Singer, and you get Jonah Coleman, and you get Jonah Sevenea, and you get Jacob Manu, and Ephesians Prysock, and Takario Davis, and you know you go start those guys. Kean Burnett, you know, we should be starting seven or eight freshmen. Uh, in this game, and um, when you can do that, it gives you an opportunity to really develop your own team and your culture. USC's toughest games have been on the road. Your toughest games have generally been on the road. What is it about playing on the road? Yeah, I think that's been kind of cool that there's been a little bit of a you know home field situation going, and uh, I, I would say that going on the road, you know, the, the old saying, right, how you went on the road, bring a good team, is, is true, but I also believe that you know, when you go on the road, you're asking these kids to get into a different element. For us, we're younger. Um, for them, they're new. You know, so I'm sure this is, you know, their road games. First time with Coach Riley. Maybe he has his own rituals that he likes to do on the road. For us, we have so many freshmen. So we have, you know, these kids are learning how to handle a road game. What's it like to try to get your schoolwork done in four days? You know, and then Friday, get on a plane. Uh, so it's different. I think the crowds have been good. Um, Hopefully, I'm sure the Oregon State USC game. There was a great crowd there um, for us. I know uh, we we should have a great crowd here, and I think they're trying. You know, hopefully, we're going to try to be able to become a great home field advantage and um, make it hard to play on the road. I think that would be the ultimate goal moving forward. That's our time. Okay, thank you.